A very good evening. From stories around the world to stories here at home, this is the National News Broadcast. I'm Vidushni Sadis Kumar. Good evening, I'm Stefan Bialwis. Let's take a look at the top stories for tonight. Rain in the next two days as well in several areas. Floods in certain locations. The foreign minister says no complaint has so far been received from the woman alleged to have been abducted. The British Conservative Party resolves the issue pertaining to the election statement. The Election Commission expresses confidence on the holding of the general election by the end of April. America prepares to impose new sanctions on China. In your local stories this evening, the new governors appointed for the Eastern and North Central Provincial Councils were sworn in before President Gotabe Rajapaksa at the Presidential Secretariat today. Mrs. Anuradha Yahampat has been appointed as the governor of the Eastern Province. Tissa Vitarana took oaths as the governor of the North Central Province. Well, the Med Department of Meteorology forecast of an increase in rainfall tomorrow and the day after in the northern, eastern, north central, Uwa and central provinces. This is the result of disturbances in the lower atmosphere surrounding the island. Well, in addition, Shah's and Shah's may experience in the southern province as well as in the Kurunagala district. Other parts of the island could receive rainfall after 1 p.m. And the meteorology report also predict extremely heavy rainfall exceeding 150 millimeters in certain locations in the districts of Trincomalee, Batiklo, Ampara, Muletev, Norelia, Badulla, and Monaragala. The report adds that the provinces of North Central, Sabragamu, Southern, and Western, as well as some places in the districts of Matale, Kandy, Jaffna, Mena, Kilnuchi, and Vaunia may also experience rainfall of over 100 millimeters. A fairly strong wind flow up to 55 kilometers per hour across the island could also be expected. The Department of Meteorology requests the general public to take adequate measures to minimize accidents caused due to lightning and strong provincial winds at times of showers or thunder showers. Many areas in Colombo have been receiving torrential rains since this afternoon. As a result, Horton Place, Vijayaram Mamavata, Baseline Road and Armour Street and adjacent roads in Colombo have come under water. This has caused severe obstructions to motor vehicle travelling. Meanwhile, Director of the Department of Meteorology, Pradeep Kodipili, has made a clarification on the problem with the condition in the next few days strong uh, winds as well as the rain especially all over the country would also expecting as per the med department more than 150 to 100 millimeter of rain until tomorrow evening so continuous raining being reported in especially the western province this is a situation for the uh, the students that they are writing the examinations by uh, tomorrow all the students and will be given provided uh, the facilities by the department of examination with the coordination of uh, the disaster management center if uh, there is unable uh, situation of having uh, the launching to the centers that has to be notified by through the 117 call center number or 267000 uh, number so that it's very important point that the parents has to be vigilant but a threat has arisen on the breaching on the tank band of Hetugas River in Valioya due to incessant rains the residents were seen getting together and releasing water from the tank by cutting the band many low-lying lands in Waunia were inundated due to heavy rain obstructions have been caused to vehicle traffic on the Waunia Setikulam and Waunia Rambukulam roads residents living along the Mahavali River have been informed to remain vigilant over the rising water level of the Ranthambe Reservoir. Heavy rainfall in Badul areas resulted in an increase in of water level in the tank. 2,163 families in 14 divisional secretariat divisions in the Batiklo district have also been affected by the inclement weather condition. Accordingly, 7,350 persons have been relocated in welfare camp. 13,802 persons in 4,322 families in the Ampara district have also been affected by heavy rains. Many low-lying lands in the area are underwater. Many roads in the Trincomalee district have been inundated due to two days of thunder showers. 129 persons in 34 families in Uwa Parnagama, Badulla, have been directed to safer places due to threats of earth slips. Well, on other stories, Defense Secretary Major General Kamal Guniratan has called on his eminence right 
Reverend Malcolm Cardinal Ranjit. The meeting has taken place at the Archbishop's residence. The Defence Secretary has clarified on the current situation in the country to His Eminence, the Archbishop. A cordial discussion on mutual understanding between His Eminence Archbishop Malcolm Cardinal Ranjit and the Defence Secretary has taken place. High Commissioner of New Zealand in Sri Lanka, Joanna Kempkes, has called on Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa at the Temple Trees. Attention has been focused at the meeting on the strong friendship between Sri Lanka and New Zealand and the liquid milk project of Sri Lanka. They have also discussed on the elimination of poverty. Bangladesh High Commissioner in Sri Lanka, Riyas Himidullah, has also called upon Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa at the Temple Trees this morning. Several topics, including international trade, were discussed during the meeting. On this occasion, the High Commissioner has also extended the best wishes of Bangladesh Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina to the Prime Minister. Chairman of the Elections Commission, Mahinda Deshapriya, says that it will be possible to hold a general election in either of the three days, the 25th, 27th or 28th of April if measures were taken to dissolve Parliament on the 1st of March. The chairman has expressed opinion to the media following a discussion between representatives of political parties and representatives of the Elections Commission today. Chairman of the Elections Commission, Mahinda Deshapriya, said that the Election Commission does not have any idea on the date of the dissolution. He added that, however, if the nearest day of the termination of parliamentary proceedings is on the 1st of March, the election has to be conducted before the Vaisak Festival. Chairman of the Elections Commission said that he said today that the election could be conducted in any one of the days, the 25th, the 27th or the 28th. The chairman also said they will display the final draft of the electoral list 2019 throughout the week starting from the 31st of December. He also said that they are engaged in investigations on ownership rights and the right to conduct protests these days. The Election Commission chief further said that they hope to certify the electoral list on the 24th of January next year. He added that they will be able to make the final certification on 15th of February 2020 after taking into consideration of the electoral list of displayed voters, he added that they will be able to conduct an election only after this date using the 2019 electoral list. Britain's governing party, Conservative Party, has emphasized that no Conservative manifesto commitment relating to the establishment of the process to form two states in Sri Lanka. Deputy Chairman of the Conservative Party, Paul Scully, made these remarks in response to an inquiry made by the High Commissioner of Sri Lanka in London. A controversy was erupted with the implications made regarding Sri Lanka in the Conservative Party election manifesto during the last two days. The Britain's general election is scheduled to be held on December 12th. The 59-page election manifesto was launched 18 days before the general election on November 24th. It was launched by British Prime Minister Boris Johnson. A special mention has been made regarding Sri Lanka in the 53rd page of the manifesto. It reads as, We will continue to support international initiatives to achieve reconciliation, stability and justice across the world and in the former conflict zones such as Cyprus, Sri Lanka and the Middle East where we maintain our support for a two-state solution. According to a statement issued by the Ministry of Foreign Relations, following the release of the manifesto, the High Commission of Sri Lanka in the UK, in collaboration with the Ministry, has taken immediate steps to address this issue. This was conveyed through a letter by Sri Lanka's High Commissioner in the UK, Manisha Gunasekara, on November 27th, to the co-chairman of the Conservative Party. As per the statement issued by the Ministry of Foreign Relations, the Deputy Chairman of the Conservative Party, Paul Scully, issued a clarification on the issue to the High Commissioner by his email communication. The email reads as, The party's position regarding Sri Lanka has not changed. To be absolutely clear, the two-state line in the section was intended to refer only to the Israel-Palestine situation in the Middle East, as is stated policy. The commitments to Sri Lanka and Cyprus were simply about continuing existing efforts to support peace and reconciliation in divided societies. Secretary of State for Environment, Food and Rural, Rural Affairs of the UK, Theresa Villiers, also made clarification on this regard through her public post on her Facebook page. The subsequent reference to a two-state solution refers to 
the Middle East, not to Cyprus or Sri Lanka. I have been in contact with Foreign Secretary Dominic Raab and he has confirmed this. Meanwhile, a broad dialogue was created not only in local media institutions but also in foreign media institutions yesterday regarding the mention of Sri Lanka in the Conservative Election Manifesto. Conservative Party Deputy Chair Paul Scully in his Twitter message yesterday once again reiterated that there is no Conservative Manifesto commitment relating to the makeup of governance of Sri Lanka. Two states relate only to the Middle East. Well, Secretary uh, to the Ministry of Foreign Relations, Peter, Ravinath Arya Singh, have made clarifications on this issue during a media briefing held in Colombo today. Statement, a reply to our letter. Uh, but uh, we have made very clear, abundantly clear uh, our very serious and strong objection uh, to the comment which has been made in the manifesto and that uh, it is totally ac unacceptable and that has never been the position of any political party in the UK. Minister of Foreign Relations Dinesh Gunawardana said at a media briefing today that no complaint has so far been received from the female employee attached to the Embassy of Switzerland who was alleged to have been abducted. A statement has not been made at this point and we don't want to get into conjecture here uh, we hope that she will make a statement because that is a prerequisite for uh, the process of a proper investigation uh, to be conducted into this matter all we can say now is that the sequence of events and the timeline given by the embassy to the CID does not, is, is totally contradictory with what she did during that period. Do the envoy still believe that she was sexually molested as, as the news came out? Well, I don't need, I'm not the Swiss ambassador, so you'll have to ask that from him. We, about an hour ago, the foreign ministry summoned all the high commissioners and ambassadors in Sri, in Sri Lanka representing all the countries. We explained to them the truth behind the present investigation on the complaint received by the ambassador on an employee of, of his embassy being victimized according to him and abducted according to him on the 25th of last month. We met the ambassador on the 27th early morning when it was brought to our notice. And the, president, the Prime Minister met the ambassador the same day in the afternoon. All of us have assured the Swiss Embassy that we'll abide by all the diplomatic immunities and all the respective processes that have been adopted in relation to such situations faced by any embassy official. Minister in charge of highways Johnston Fernando says that the road extension of the Southern Expressway from Baraka Kumbuka to Matale has been opened without any concern on the safety of the general public using the portion of the highway. The minister engaging in an observation tour of the Southern Expressway said that if the relevant officials do not accept responsibility on public safety, he will close this part of the highway shortly. 
The previous regime has declared open the fourth stage of the Southern Expressway at a date closer to the presidential election. And the residents in the area point out that wild animals, including elephants, frequently travel across the highway as a result of not constructing a safety fence along the highway. They also say that many problems have arisen due to construction of the highway after altering the regular plan. The general public adds that threats of floods remain in many locations of the highway. Constructions are taking place even now at some locations of the expressway. Total distance of the expressway from Mathura to Hambantota is 96 kilometers. The work has commenced fulfilling a pledge given through the Mahindra Chintana forward vision policy of the President, Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksa. Constructions had taken place during the past regime as well, but at a retarded level. The Southern Expressway is regarded as an extremely crucial roadway as well as source for greater economic development. Motorists are able to travel to Colombo from Hambantota within a short period of two and a half hours. However, people continue to express their displeasure over inability to have any use of the fourth stage for transport as well as for economy since the day of the opening. They also say that the overall benefit of the extended highway could be experienced only after the opening of the first stage from Martha to Beliatha and second stage from Beliatha to Vatia. Thereafter, it will become possible to travel from Colombo to Hambantota without hindrance. The organization named Satya Gave Shakyo has also expressed opinion on the Southern Expressway at a media briefing in Colombo today. President Gotabe Rajapaksa says that his special attention has been focused on expediting the implementation of measures taken to be taken against those who were responsible for the Easter attack and also against those who had deliberately shunned their responsibilities over the attack. The President made these remarks recording a note on his Facebook account. It has also been pointed out that instructions have been given on future actions to be adopted through evaluation of the task of the Commission at a recent meeting with the members of the Commission investigating Easter Sunday attack. The President further said that the representatives of the Commission have also been enlightened on the future strategy to prevent terrorist attack of this nature. President Gotabe Rajapaksa further said that he is determined to grant justice to all those who were victimized by the Easter attack. The government requests the farming community to commit themselves to increase agricultural produce, thereby increasing their revenue and saving foreign exchange. It also points out that the country has the ability to export many types of crops under Sri Lanka brand name. It has been pointed out that Sri Lanka is importing annually not only items such as sugar, milk powder, wheat flour, spices, vegetable oils, pulses, animal feed, but also daily consumer items such as dried chilies, big onions, red onions, green grams and kurakkan. Even tamarind, watermelon, moldy fish and sprats are being imported. Sri Lanka annually spends a sum of 1,781 million US dollars in this regard. This amount equals to 289,532 million rupees in local currency. The government points out that if these crops could be grown locally, this massive foreign exchange could be saved. The farmers will also be greatly benefited economically. The government also requests all parties to dedicate their efforts to create a rich farmer earning foreign exchange through extensive cultivation of crops such as maize, green grams and cowpea. World Bank's chief economist for South Asia, Hans Timmer, attended an event today organized by Central Bank of Sri Lanka as the keynote speaker. He made these remarks during his address to the gathering. He was the chief economist for the... So in our view, what we see recently in the region is really a globally driven cyclical downturn that comes on top of all kinds of structural problems that were already there in the countries and that make the, the solution of the structural problems even more difficult. What you normally do in a situation like that is to try to mitigate the impact through counter-cyclical uh, policies, both fiscal policies and monetary policies. And especially when you think it's a temporary uh, slowdown, then fiscal policies, uh, counter-cyclical policies would be very logical. When you think it's much more 
a structural change and you need adjustments, then you have to be careful with fiscal policies and you go more to monetary policies. That's the normal rule that you have. The big problem in South Asia is there is no fiscal room to really uh, engage in counter-cyclical policies. That's almost true for every country in South Asia because basically most countries have engaged in pro-cyclical policies in the past and instead of building up buffers during good periods, the opposite happened. And so that's also for Sri Lanka a challenge to be dealt with uh, going forward. There is objectively a reason for uh, fiscal stimulus, but at the same time there is not enough room to actually do that fiscal stimulus. And then you have to be very careful that you get the balance right, because if you overstimulate and you don't have the room, then instead of stabilizing the economy, you could potentially destabilize the economy because you are hurting the, the sentiment in, in a country. So that's a big challenge uh, at the moment in uh, South Asia, not just for Sri Lanka, but for many other countries. Big challenge for policymakers also. Minister Bandula Gunawardana says that solutions will be provided within two weeks to the conflict situation that has arisen between the governing authority of the Gampa Vikramarachi Ayurvedic Medical Institute affiliated to the Kalnir University and the students of the institute. The minister made these remarks engaging in an inspection tour of the Gampaha Vikramarachi Ayurvedic Medical Institute today. The minister has also focused attention on measures to be taken with regard to the recommencement of academic activities and examinations of the relevant years. Minister Bandulugunavadana has also inspected the stalled building constructions of the dormitories of the Ayurvedic Medical Institute. The minister has presided over a meeting at the University Commission yesterday regarding expansion of higher education studies of GCE advanced level qualified students who are unable to gain university admission. Vice chancellors of all universities, deans of faculties, registrars, university professors and lecturers have also participated in the meeting. Minister Bandula Gunavadana has also observed the presentation titled The Hat for Robot Harry Potter, which has received the first place in the hardware section of the International Social Robot Competition held in Spain. It was a creation by the students of the Applied Sciences Faculty of the University of Sri Jayawadanapura. They have won the first prize, competing 80 contestants from 50 countries. The minister has inspected the innovation at the Ministry of Higher Education. Australia has provided a broad assistance for the reporting initiative of the Colombo Stock Exchange. A special ceremony was held at the Colombo Stock Exchange premises today to mark the milestone of the two-year collaboration. Colombo Stock Exchange and Global Reporting Initiative marked the collaboration focused on providing guidance to listed companies on ESG disclosures and enhanced corporate transparency. The collaboration has been successful in engaging Sri Lankan listed companies to understand their capacity on sustainability, reporting and identify and deliver the technical assistance and capacity building needed to improve awareness on sustainability reporting. ITC. On behalf of the Columbus Stock Exchange, I assure you of our continued support to foster quality reporting practices among our listed entities, which is very much in the best interest of the investor community and capital market stakeholders. I would like to thank GRI and the Australian government for its continuous support over the years and look forward to working closely with you all to achieve and fulfill our objective, which is to ingrain into companies in Sri Lanka the sustainability reporting standards, which are developed with multi-stakeholder contributions in the greater interest of the public. But a clearly a, a fantastic partnership is happening here in Sri Lanka. I think what I really want us to say is a couple of things. One is business can be good for the environment. And I think with sustainability reporting, the GRI is a world leader in. It can show not only uh, shareholders, but the broader community as to what a company is doing. This helps with its investment, it helps with its broader public relations, but more importantly, it puts it on the global map. Companies here in Sri Lanka can show and demonstrate to the world at a time when issues of climate and other, one, and other wicked problems, ones that we need to be addressing. Sri Lanka is part of the solution.
I'd also just like to say thank you for the leadership that is here today. The Colombo Stock Exchange, by partnering with GRI, is showing that it sees a vision for its members and those that are listed on the exchange to be part of a global sustainable solution. And I'm also delighted to hear so many representatives here today, the top companies here in Sri Lanka. By your participation, you are demonstrating to the smaller and medium-sized com companies that this is a very important element of their business as well. It's a win-win, or they say the triple bottom line. His Excellency, David Gordon. General Secretary of the Sri Lanka Freedom Party, State Minister Dayasiri Jaisekar says that his party is dedicated to safeguard the victories won and to bring the country forward. He made these remarks assuming the duties in the post of State Minister. Dayasiri Jaisekar has commenced duties as the State Minister of Industries and Supplies at his in ministry amidst all religious blessings. Ministers Nimal Siripala de Silva, Mahinda Amaravira and Dumida Desai Nayaka and Professor Rohana Lakshman Piyadasa were also present on the occasion. Speaker Karujai Surya has called on the Mahanayaka Theras and received the blessings this morning. Initially, he has met Mahanayaka of the Malvata chapter, most venerable Tibbutuave Sri Sumangala Thera, and received the blessings. Thereafter, he has called on Anunayaka Theras of the Malvata chapter, venerable Dimbul Kumare Sri Vimala Dharma Thera, and venerable Nyangudu Sri Vijita Siri Thera, and received blessings. Later on, he has visited the Asgiri Mahaviharya and met Mahanayaka of the Asgiriya chapter, most venerable Varaka Goda Sri Nyana Ratana Thera. Registrar of the Askiriya chapter, Venerable Dr. Madhagama Dhammananda Thera, was also present on the occasion. The speaker has also visited the Vidya Sagra Pirivena in Hurikadua, Manikina, to call upon Mahanayaka of the Ramanya Mahanikaya, Most Venerable Napani Pemasiri Thera, and receive the blessings. The Department of Educational Publication requests heads of schools to take measures to hand over the scheduled text at the beginning of next year. All measures have so far been taken to provide the necessary text to the students. The Minister of Education has provided directly all textbooks to schools with more than 1,500 students. Schools with less than 1,500 students could receive their text from the Divisional Education Offices and Periphery School Centres. The Commissioner General of Government Educational Publications informs the heads of schools to receive the required text from these institutions. Further inquiries could be made from the telephone number 0112-784815. President of Afghanistan Ashraf Ghani says that Afghanistan would use the successful experiences of the world countries, especially Sri Lanka, to bring long-lasting peace in the country. Afghan president made these remarks during a meeting with the outgoing ambassador of Sri Lanka to Kabul yesterday. The farewell meeting of the Afghan president with outgoing ambassador of Sri Lanka to Kabul, Gagan P. Bulat Singhala, was held at the presidential palace in Kabul. President Ghani extended gratitude to Ambassador Bulat Singhala for his endeavours during his mission in Afghanistan to further consolidate and expand relations between Afghanistan and Sri Lanka at political, economic and cultural areas. The Sri Lankan ambassador expressed delight over his mission in Afghanistan and lauded the president's effort for Afghanistan economic development, ending war and restoring peace and stability to the country. He added that Sri Lanka once had gone through a dark, time of conflict, but peace prevails in the country now. President Ghani has said peace is top priority of Afghanistan and, made and main demand of the Afghan people. He has added that Afghanistan will take advantage of the copious experience of other countries, particularly Sri Lanka, for bringing sustainable peace to the country. Sri Lankan Airlines has won the Passenger Choice Award for Best Wi-Fi, rather Wi-Fi for Central Asia at the Future Travel Experience Asia Awards 2019 held in Singapore recently. 
and the global accolade presented by the Airline Passenger Experience Association was given to the national career based on the passenger ratings. The Sri Lanka's national career received the award at the Future Tra Travel Experience Asia Expo, which was held on November 13, 2019 at Marina Bay Sands Expo and Convention Center. At the same event, Sri Lankan Airlines was re-awarded its first-time major airline 2020 official airline rating, which was presented at the Apex Expo held in Los Angeles earlier this year. The official airline ratings and Apex Passenger Choice Awards are created based on neutral, third-party passenger feedback and insights gathered using a five-star scale. More than one million flights were rated by passengers across nearly 600 airlines from around the world. Sri Lankan has been consistently winning prestigious accolades, including leading international airline in South Asia and leading airline passenger class business award, both for the second consecutive year at the South Asian Travel Awards 2019. Sri Lankan Airlines has a route network of 130 cities in 58 countries, including code share operations, in partnership with the world's finest airlines. On other stories, Janabimani Honorary Awards presentation was held at the BMI CH in Colombo recently. The senior Kira program being telecast over the national television was felicitated with the Janabimani Award on this occasion. A group of entrepreneurs, artists, sports and media personnel were selected as award recipients. They have been felicitated with Supreme Service Awards, Honorary Awards and Janabimani Awards. The Senior Kira program is a television program with a higher artist taste which addresses meaningfully to the human mind with the sense of intellect. Creative Director of the program Mahesh Nishanka was felicitated with the Janabimani Honorary Award. Chief guest at the award ceremony was Army Commander Lieutenant General Shavendra Silva. The awards presentation ceremony has been organized for the 11th occasion by All Ceylon Independent Media Personal Association. Ratnapura District Parliamentarian of the United People's Freedom Alliance, Ranjit de Souza, has passed away while undergoing treatment in a hospital in Singapore this morning. He was 57 years old at the time of demise. Late Ranjit de Souza was a planter by profession. He had entered politics in 1997 through the Sri Lanka Freedom Party as the chairperson of the Atakalampanna Pradeshya Sabha. In the year 2002, he became the leader of opposition of the same Pradeshya Sabha. He was elected as a UPFA member to the Sabaragamua Provincial Council at the elections held in 2004. He has functioned as a provincial council minister from 2004 to 2008. Ranjit de Soysa was elected to parliament from the Ratnapura district at the 2015 general elections. He has also functioned as the member of the parliamentary committee on youth, sports and arts. He has also been an active leader of the Sri, La Sri Lanka Podhijana Peramana as well. Final rights will be notified later. Our television viewers may also be aware of the fact that young artists in many towns are engaged in beautifying roads. These days, you may also know the objective of their endeavor that is not only to be creative, a pleasing scene of the environment, but also to give some enchanting rest to the minds of the tired motorists and passengers. The youth community has presented themselves voluntarily to add color to the roadways through their latest innovations. The art of drawing they have commenced from highways and tunnelways have now expanded throughout the country. Their creations are nourished by the effects of the local as well as the foreign art medium. Both the Sri Lankans and foreigners have focused their attention on the social reality expressed through their new creations. 